Child labor is bad. Or is it? Okay, okay, relax. It was a joke. Jeez. How did you even build this guillotine so quickly? Whatever. Let's just take a quick gander at the community guidelines and see what we need to edit out of the script so that this video isn't nuked upon release. Okay, min-maxing your child soldier's stats will probably have to get taken out. Mm, I'll probably have to take out the cave mining for kids section as well, just in case, but other than that, it seems like the rest should be fine. Hopefully. And before you ask, yes, I do write all my scripts in traditional Chinese, and no, it's not easier or anything. Actually, it's incredibly difficult, but I just started doing it and it kind of stuck, so, you know, old habits and whatnot. Okay, let's start again. Child labor. It's been around for millennia. Ever since people were having children, by the time they were able to walk, they were usually set to work. But was it really all that bad? Are labour laws really necessary and why I believe that children today are being primed by global corporations to get back to work. But before that, let's start with child labour in the first human civilizations. What were the career paths for children? Well, you'd often have children work as farmhands, tending to crops and animals, or uh, they could be used as uh, sacrifices to pagan deities. Yeah, it was a pretty shit life as a child back then. Now you could argue that being sacrificed to an ancient pagan demon doesn't necessarily equate to gainful employment. But I'd have to disagree because when I clock into work, it feels like I'm handing my precious firstborn child, my time, to a sadistic, unmerciful demon, my boss, and in return I get a bountiful harvest, a salary. This really was the case for most of human history, except we stopped the sacrificing thing. But children would usually just work as extra hands on the farm or whatever the family business was, be it undertaking, merchantry, whatever. You don't really get much divergence from this tried and true method on a mass scale till we come to the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. This is where, thankfully, career opportunities expand and now instead of just working on the family business, you can do something else, such as child miner, child chimney sweeper, child factory worker, child shipyard worker, and even child street sweeper, which entailed the child to stand at crosswalks and sweep the street as rich people walked past, so as they didn't get any dirt on their shoes. Now you could look at this and think, oh how terrible, children being forced to work in bad conditions for low pay instead of going to school. But without these children, how would the poor factory owners make any money? I'm sure most of those children would be happy to work 16 hour unpaid shifts without breaks just so that the factory owner could scrape enough money together to put food on the table for his kids. If I was a child worker, I'd be happy to work in a factory. Well, not a pencil factory, but other than that. Knowing that I was making a massive difference to some of the most oppressed groups in society, landlords and factory owners, would have me there bright and early every morning. Unfortunately, the oppressive government started to enact child labour laws, like the Factory Act in 1833, which prohibited children aged 9 and under from working in factories, which actually wasn't very popular with the poorest families at the time, who now, instead of having an income generating asset, their child, they now had another expense, their child. So now children aren't allowed to work in factories, but at least are still able to go into the mines and break some rocks with the boys. <sighs> Can't have shit in this day and age, can you? What's even so bad about child mining? Ooh, a little dust in the lungs. Who cares? That shit never killed anyone. And even if it did, they all smoked back then anyway, so what's the difference? But that wasn't all. They then pushed more and more laws until now, where in the UK and most of the Western world, a child has to be in full-time education until 16 before they can even get a job. So we went from the earliest civilizations employing children to now where it's actually illegal. What a shame. I, I mean, oh, how terrible. I'm so grateful to the government for stepping in and making laws that are definitely in my interest. But that's only the Western Hemisphere. In developing countries as a result of the banning of child labour, but still huge demand for cheaply made products, you actually saw a boom in industrialised child labour, kind of similar to how you saw that boom from the Industrial Revolution. Textile factories in Bangladesh and Pakistan 
now with the use of child labour, supply a lot of the materials needed worldwide. So they didn't really ban child labour, all they really did was outsource it. This outsourcing of child jobs didn't just include factory work, it also included war, with child soldiers now on the front lines of almost 75% of all conflicts. Most famously, or shall I say infamously, Joseph Kony, who was probably the biggest person around in 2012. He was notorious for capturing children and forcing them to join his child army, and was at large in Uganda in the early 2010s. I would remember back in the day in school, everyone would be making jokes about how they were going to get kidnapped and become one of Kony's child soldiers. It was such a big deal, but after looking it up, he's still alive to this day in 2024, apparently hiding in Sudan. So the whole stopping Kony movement was really just a waste of time. These child soldiers are made to do a lot of deplorable deeds. They're even involved in child trafficking rings that kidnap children and force them into slavery. Which is like, damn, you could have been on the other end of the gun so easily. The slavery and child labour business is actually so bad that a large percentage of the world's cobalt being mined in the Democratic Republic of Congo is actually being mined by children, in usually unsafe conditions. Children aged from 6 and upward are around 17% of the workforce of the artisanal cobalt miners. Most don't even have tools to dig with either, so they dig for the cobalt with their bare hands. Which is kind of ironic how the cobalt necessary for some of the greatest technological advancements we have is collected in the most primitive ways. Imagine being a child in the Congo getting paid around $2 a day to mine cobalt, dodging mine collapses and the dust and the heat in the mines. Also, an iPad kid can play skibbity dub 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 yes yes on his tablet on repeat. But don't worry, soon, thanks to global corporations, that skibbity kid will also be mining for cobalt. Let me explain. You see, you might believe that TikTok is making people dumber with brain rot by giving them high doses of dopamine constantly, eventually eroding their ability to think or concentrate on anything. But I'd argue that it's done in the aim of the exact opposite. If you think about human brains like computers and say that attributes are given values that are 32-bit signed integers, let's also say that one of the attributes humans have is the retard. I mean, big dumb value. This value would correspond with behaviours that are seen as dumb, logically. So the higher your big dumb value, the more dumb you were. Still following along? Good. If you somehow got your big dumb value to increase over time till you hit the maximum value, it would eventually flip into the negatives because of how 32-bit signed integers work. Meaning, instead of having a really big dumb value, it would be negative. Ergo, you would be incredibly smart. It's kind of like how in Call of Duty Zombies, when you get to a high enough round, their health goes into the negative and you get an insta-kill round. In both cases, the smartness slash zombie health would flip from the max value to the minimum value each round slash each time the big dumb value is updated. Now this may seem a little far-fetched, right? But TikTok isn't the only company that's working to bring back child labour. You might think the children yearn for the mines Minecraft meme is funny, right? Well, the game is about going into caves and mining precious metal resources. It also has cave collapse mechanics as well as resource management. Do you think it's a coincidence that the number one rule in Minecraft is don't dig straight down? I posit that when the time is right, you'll see a technological advancement update in the game that will teach you how to dig and mine for cobalt, tin and lithium, as well as the refining process for each of those materials. There are 175 million active players, and if we assume on the low end that around a third of those are children, you have a potential child labour workforce of around 55 million. To put that into perspective, the estimated amount of children that are working in the DRC mines today is only around 50,000. Imagine the economic output that a labour force of 50 million children can achieve. You'd probably be able to pay off the national debt of most countries with a labour force that large. For those who are still not convinced, there is actual proof that the US Army is also involved in this ploy as well. America's Army is a first-person shooter game series that is developed and published by the actual US Army, with the aims of recruiting potential soldiers. I'm not even bullshitting you, look this up. The first title of the series, called America's Army, was released in 2002 and was a free-to-play game. Yeah, back then there was no such thing as free games, so you know for sure there were a bunch of broke kids just playing it because it was free. 
In America's Army 3, they actually removed the ability to jump to make it more realistic because everybody was just bee hopping around the map. Apparently, reaching Mark 3 to get into the enemy's HQ at round start wasn't realistic enough for the army. Now, if you were to have the demographics data to hand, it would be pretty obvious where the age skew would lie. Mostly teens slash kids, which further proves my theory that child labour is going to be making a comeback, slowly but surely. All they need to do is refine the process and optimise it, and before long, it will be like it never left. If that wasn't enough, the US Army also sponsors the Call of Duty franchise, and that's why the in-game animations for reloading and firing are all identical to how those weapons actually function. Because the army believes that if kids sit there watching a reload animation thousands of times on screen, it would be easier to teach them the real thing, which is actually true. Technically, I have also been brainwashed by these corpos as a child. I remember back in the late 2000s playing Roblox, work at a pizza place game. I remember having to make the pizzas as the chef, and some idiot would always come in and mess up my workstation, throwing pizza dough circles everywhere. I also remember coming back from school to clock in a shift at a pizza place, Also, I could buy a fake TV in my virtual home. I'm not gonna lie though, I had that place running like a well-oiled machine every time I joined a server. This isn't even mentioning the fact that IKEA are trialling actual jobs that are paid where you're a staff member in an IKEA Roblox game, which when I think about is actually genius. So yeah, there's a lot of evidence that goes to suggest that child labour will be making a big comeback in the coming days. That's why, to get ahead of the curve, I started shitposting on YouTube. I mean, I've already almost got 3,600 potential child workers in just 9 months. So if push comes to shove, you know I have my bases covered. So this is my warning to everyone out there that I told you it's coming. It's now up to you to do with this information what you will. But anyway, that's all we have time for for today's video. If you want to help me build my new army, like and subscribe. But other than that, thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye.